Sunday Parsa Shoftim Rashkoidish El Toshim Pe Aleph. The Chaim Salvovis establishes this fundamental principle that what's the reason that Hashem created the world that people should have to put in so much effort to reach their goals. A person should have what they need. They have to go to work and they have to spend time and sweat till finally they get, they achieve, they have their needs. What's the reason for that? All other Bali Chaim, everything that Hashem created, they have whatever they need. They eat grass, they have everything close to them, easy to get. And the Chavis Avavis explains that the number one reason for that is that Hashem wanted to test the person if he will use the right means of attaining his goals. Is he going to be using the right mahalchem? Is he going to do things that are right? Or on the way trying to achieve his goals, he will start doing things that he's not supposed to. That's a very simple explanation why Hashem put their needs further from the person. A person has to try to reach it. And then they have the Nisoyen to do it the right way. And sometimes people could use the wrong way. And it's constantly people have needs, numerous needs every single day. It's not only about Parnosa, about earning money. It's anything that we so badly want. And we pick up a phone and we talk to this person and we try to push all, all of the above. Now, this Nisoyan that a person has has two parts to it. Number one is the Nisoyan of a person doing things they're not supposed to. Or at times when they're not supposed to be doing it. That's what the Chavah Salova says. For example, if a person is working for Parnosa, at certain times a person is not allowed to work for Parnosa. Shabbos, they have to stop. When they have times for Kviyas Itim, they're supposed to be learning then, and not allowed to work for Parnosa then. It's a set time, they have to drop everything and learn. That same time every day, that's the Halacha. Uh, the same is with the way they try to talk to people, have to be watching out, say only the truth and the full truth. And uh, overcharging and all, everything that includes things that are not 100% al the Torah, that is the Nisayim, to try to see. And that's what, what it means, a successful businessman. A successful businessman is someone that went through the path and made sure constantly to do what's right. So that's one part of the Nisayim. The second part of the Nisayim, we elaborated in the previous year was that even when a person is doing what's right, and everything is according to law, but where is the mind of the person? As long as the person is feeling that they are so capable, and they could make it work, and they could change the way things are running, that's a Nisoyen of Gaiva, or the way the Torah calls it, Koichi Voitzim Yodi, I'm powerful, I'm strong, I can make things happen, I can move things around, and that is a very that that is in a certain sense like worshiping Avodah Zorah. It means they believe in their koyach, they're forgetting that Hashem is the one that's running the world and everything they could have achieved, would have achieved in in, in ways that are muta, in the ways that Hashem wants them. They they really didn't do anything. It's a sheker, the whole thing. They're constantly supposed to be reminding themselves to do it with hachanoa, humble. That's how they are supposed to be doing it. So there's two parts of the Nisoyen, to do what's right, and to constantly remember, while you're doing what's right, to do it with the right uh, mindset. mindset. That's the second part. Now, what's important to understand is that it's so important to have the right, the right mindset because they're really connected, these two parts. Because it's not possible for a person to have the wrong mindset and to only have an issue with the way he's thinking, but then he's really going to do everything that's right. It won't happen. What happens is that constantly a person has uh, 
it, it goes over. That we see in, in, in all aspects of life, when you have the right mindset, you can have the koyach to do the right thing. But if you don't have the right mindset, you're also going to be doing the wrong thing because it's going to be too hard to always comply. Now, there's another way of explaining this, the two mindsets. So a person should have more ideas in their head what's a thought that I'm supposed to be thinking and when is it a thought that I'm not supposed to be thinking and exercise is how a person could train their mind and to do it the right way and once again it's not only when someone's working for a living it's constantly when a person's trying to get somewhere trying to to achieve all, all, all the needs that a person has we know that a person has guf and an ashama now the guf always wants to strengthen get things that make the guf strong the neshama always wants thrives to, to, to be able to, to get things that give the neshama uh, uh, chiyos, to give the neshama life what the neshama enjoys a guf likes to be strong the, the culture the, the Greek uh, the, the, the Greek culture that they exercise and, and, and sports and becoming a strong body the goof wants that the goof wants anything that's going to give something for the goof for the body to make that part should be powerful it's not only that it's eating anything that gives he is for the goof on the other hand the neshama can't stand it because it it, it crushes the neshama the neshama is enjoys and not only enjoys lives when you give food for the neshama for example if you give the neshama a really good tefillah you give for the neshama the connection to Hashem the neshama just got something the neshama was starving till the God, you gave some food for the neshama so constantly the goof is looking to get food and the neshama is looking to get food now a person that's usually uh, stable, let's call it, gives some for a, a little bit for the goof, gives, a, gives for the neshama. Usually it's not 50-50. <laughs> but the person knows what it is. person tasted it. Person, uh, uh, but, but, but constantly the goof is like begging, begging to give more for the goof. And the neshama is begging. And when a person, person feels depressed and and down, usually it's coming, not because the goof didn't get what it needs, just the neshama didn't get, and the nefesh is starving for something that the nefesh needs. Even in when it comes to songs, music, some music make the goof react, make it jump, makes it go uh, on beat. And the goof likes it, and young people, they like... It should be blasting music because the goof is like down and then you, you, you make it react, the goof. Then you have different type of songs that they give something for the neshama. The neshama wakes up. All of a sudden he's finding himself with tears in his eyes because he woke up something. That's one of the ways to explain to a teenager or to others what's the difference between this kind of music and that kind of music. What reacts to it? You're giving something for your goof Beginning. Watch yourself after five minutes listening what happened. Who got excited? The goof got excited or the neshama got excited? That, that's, and in life, throughout, constantly they're begging and each one is, is taking what, the, what they're getting. When, when we're talking about a shtatlas, a person is trying to do something and really is waiting for results, trying to get a certain results. If the result is money, if the result is power, he got somewhere, he showed he got his way. The results could be uh, Relationships. a relationship that he got somewhere, or anything that a person was trying to achieve, to get there. And they, they, they're working hard, they're doing A, B, C, constantly. They're talking, they're, they're doing things, they're picking up a phone and persuading, doing all kinds of things to try to get somewhere. The goof, not only enjoys a piece of meat 
the guf enjoys feeling that it's strong, powerful. It's the guf likes that. It's in charge. In charge. That's what the guf likes. Now, when 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 a person is in the middle of doing things, he gets pulled in, and he's saying, "Wow, I had such siyata deshmaya," quote unquote. But automatically, the goof loves this. Oh, I like this. I'm gonna. I, I'm just gonna tell him my peace of mind, and I'm gonna make that happen. The goof gets pulled into that so many times. For example, in the middle of doing chinuch on a child, a Talmud, a student in yeshiva, and the child is misbehaving, the student is misbehaving, and right now. Really what's supposed to be happening is that the neshama is supposed to be talking to that neshama, soul to soul. But he disturbed me right now, and I'm more powerful than that student because I'm bigger, stronger, I'm the adult here. So, without thinking, the goof gets pulled into that, it's like a vacuum gets pulled in, and we tell the child, listen, if you don't stop talking right now, kindly get up and go out. That, you could like watch it happen. The goof is taking over, what's, it's a shtadlis right now. It's regular shtadlis. The goof is taking over and trying to be in charge and powerful and showing the other party, you're not gonna mess with me. Even if it's a nuchnius. And this is a chavrusa that's sitting and learning. It's the same exact thing. The learning, they came to learn and to, uh, that's the reason why they came here. But he's trying to say something. And as Chavrus is trying to say the opposite. And he's trying to be strong. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, whoa! That's called the Hishtadlis with the wrong mindset. It's all over the place. It's constantly. And it's a money that every time I'm trying to get somewhere, we get pulled into that, and the goof is now talking, the goof is now reacting. The goof loves it, and Shama hates it. Shama cannot stand it. Feels so not in place. Neshama likes to feel that I can't do anything and only Hashem could help me. That feeling, the Neshama loves that feeling of not, when a person has a doubt that maybe they're still supposed to do something and maybe they're doing what's wrong. I'm not talking about that. That's when a person doesn't have Semcha. But when a person reaches a situation which they can't do anything about it, they're clear, they have no guilt feelings, nothing. They're just in Hashem's hands. They're just in Hashem's hands and they say, you tell them, and they, they had a hatzlocha, they were successful, not to be depressed about it. I'm in the Shem's hands. They have that feeling that, I, you know, I really don't know what's good for me. And, or this or that. And they're just sitting, and the birds are chirping, and it's good weather, and they're saying to them, and I don't know. People ask them, what's going to happen? I have no idea. I really, I, I, I feel I'm in the Shem's hands. That feeling, and the Shoma loves it, and a person could feel so calm, so in peace with, with themselves, with the situation, and the sober simcha, that's because they just gave food, they gave for the Neshama the needs of the Neshama. Now, ultimately, Heshtadlis was meant that a person should be doing things and constantly feeling like that. It's a Madreiga. We have to work, maybe, the whole life to reach there. But there's a lot of levels. It's not like, or you have it or you don't. As long as you're climbing the ladder, as long as you, you understand what we're talking about, that is the part two that a person has to get. That that's successful. That you're already doing it at the right times. You're already doing the right things. But you let, you let go. You're not in a situation that you are pushing, you are neutral. You are neutral, you are so besimcha. Are you doing it? And it's very, very hard because we're living in a world which if a person doesn't try very hard, they get pulled. Without wanting to, we get pulled to the other direction. Even if we did everything right. For example, and it's very important this example because you have to understand that it's only Ishtadlus, this Nisoyen that a person has is one of a family. There's a whole family of these Nisoyenists and one of the examples is eating. Simply. A person eats. Now, when a person eats, the goof 
gets pulled that a person, the goof enjoys eating, enjoys everything that the goof gets, the body gets the vitamins, even the, the even the health, but the taste, and 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 especially when a person puts in some shtados into the food. I want you to grill it, but get put a little bit more salt. Yeah, yeah, put more. They they get all into it, and then they feel that they went to the. It's interesting to watch it. They went to the most expensive expensive restaurant. They're just enjoying. They're already enjoying before they started eating. Just watching. They're sitting by the window so people should see them. That they're sitting in this store. Why is that? That's because I came here to give my goof. So it doesn't only have to be the food. It's all around it. Yeah, they 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 said that United United Airlines just signed a a uh, a contract to invest in these new Concords. They're coming out again mm-hmm. with these planes that will be able to fly from Eretz Yisrael to to America in six and a half and seven hours in half the time. Not say less than that, and they figured out a way. Now, it's only going to have business. It's being these very narrow. Now, the issue is that most people are not going to buy it because the whole excitement of business is to watch the guys in the back. <laughs> I, you're sitting, okay, it's a cheer. What, what, what's the whole idea of it? But people are now giving mozin for their goof. The goof enjoys meat, wine, and enjoys being powerful, being better. The goof likes that. Now, when a person eats, there's a lot of levels, but this is like a little bit what's going on. We know that Arizal explains that why did Hashem create a situation where a person constantly has to eat? <laughs> it gets tiring <laughs> with time. And the, the reason is because we know that in every food, there are this Kedusha. It's called Nitoitis Kedusha, particles of Kedusha in there when a person eats. The goof is getting the part of the meat which is called gashmias, but the neshama is getting those particles of gedusha, and that's why the pasuk says tzadik oichel, the tzadik eats lasoiva nafshoi for his nefesh, for his neshama. The neshama gets elevated after they eat. Now it depends what the person con- concentrates. The person can concentrate on the goof and concentrate on the neshama. Now we know where we stand in this aspect. And we know that a person does, is not bad, but it's just that's the world. Unless a person is working very, very hard, th- by default, that's how they eat. Now, it's possible a person should be aware about it and try to do something. For example, they try to make the brochas properly. That's, that's a very big step in the right direction. That's all. They concentrate, and that, and that, that in itself is a mulchama, is a wukan, at least any sign, to remember, and in all situations, and when you have a sophic, which brocha is the right brocha, hey, I can't eat it, 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 it's on itself, but that's already climbing your letter. Then you have the next step of before you eat, just say it. Say, I'm eating in order to have koyach to serve Hashem. The, the steps, the steps, then you have people, and there are, we should know, yes, in this generation, a lot of people that work on themselves. And they concentrate on other things while they're eating. They're looking at a safer, and they eat only what's healthy. And they and they have in mind they have a mind that they want to eat. So whatever has to happen, this is the sadiqim. There are levels. There are people that are not there yet, but they're already climbing. There's a lot of it. now a regular person. If they don't do anything, there's no doubt how the person is going to look when it comes to food. It's it's simple. It's important to understand Ishtadlis is the same idea. Even though it's coming from a different angle. But Ishtadlis, we're living in this world. This is the environment here. If we don't constantly remind ourselves strong, this is what's going to happen. That means a person is going to officially, quote-unquote, do everything that's right. But they're going to get all the way in. And then they're going to be... They they just, let's say, uh, for example, it's a day after Rosh Hashanah. It's the day after Yom Kippur, back to work. Yeah, the m- Monday morning, after Yom Kippur, and they promise that they're not going to do Averis, and they're not. And they are not. That means they're really trying to do everything that's right today. But once they start negotiating on a deal, it's so tough. 
Because right now they're sitting here and you're allowed to negotiate on a deal. Hashem told you, not only I like, is nothing wrong, absolutely nothing wrong. But in order to be able to be at that level, to be able to negotiate on a deal and really like hold on tight to Hashem the whole time, remembering, listen, it's not like if I'm going to be this unbelievable businessman, I'm going to make another $50,000 because I'm going to squeeze it out. Or I'm going to make it here. Or if it's Bashet, I'll earn it somewhere else. I'll make another $50,000. And if it's not mine, even though I'm going to squeeze out of the person another $50,000, it won't help me. I'm going to be losing it the next day. To remember that and to live constantly like that is very, very hard. So the number one uh, step is to have to understand don't be so quick to say, what's the problem? I have been talking, I promise you, I have been talking, and, and, and I talk about Hashem, and I, I try to do everything that's right. It's a lifelong journey. It's constantly working on yourself. Remind yourself, if you remind yourself that there's an idea to eat on a higher level, if you heard about it the last time, half a year ago, do you really think that today it has a... A meaning that you're eating differently because of that. You're not eating differently because of that. Be aware that most probably, even after you're talking, be talking, and you said over a gorgeous story about a Shabbat Suda to your children about having be talking, but while you're doing a Shabbat and not only in Parnosa, like we keep on saying it, like when you're trying to, 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 to convince someone that it's corrupt the system, and why is the school of my child doing this? And you're calling the principal, and you're screaming yourself blue in the face, and you're pushing. No, we have to get that person out, and that person is not allowed to be in, 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 in a chinuch position. Could be right. It could 100% be right, and it could be that you needed to voice your opinion, and if you wouldn't have, it could be you would be doing something wrong. That could be. Sometimes that's the case. But look what happened to you. Look what happened while you were talking. You got shoved in, and now you're talking with a whole passion. Now you're talking, and you're not there anymore. And that's why, within a split second, you're already on Lashon Hara, because if your mindset is wrong, then you're, it's not possible to say everything that's right. You have to like write your whole your whole drasha down before and what you want to say. I say tell him we we'll wait till the next day, and you don't know if it's if, if you prepared enough. I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm gonna fall. Like I can't speak to the person yet. It's it's very very tough, but the first step is to know that it's tough. It's not so simple like it sounds to have the right mindset. That is what a person is constantly supposed to be reminding themselves. Another part of it, the the idea that Hashem put us into this world and we should be calling the principal complaining about a certain teacher. Yeah. Because sometimes we're supposed to be moicha, sometimes we're supposed to... It's very, a person is not allowed to just disconnect. And there's only one example of many. So every... It, 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 sometimes the way of explaining it is it's not like Hashem put our needs further from us. He put it down under and sometimes or most times in order to get to where we're supposed to be getting uh, in order to achieve the goals that a person needs if it's in, in money they have to like dig in to 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 sometimes to the sewer system they have to go in there and take out what they need why does it make it like that why do i have to uh, uh, work in manhattan some, not, not every person needs to work in Manhattan, but why is it like that? Why, in order to, 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 to some, uh, a person wants to get to work, they have to travel and, and be on the bus. But it's constantly like that. Even the example that we spoke about earlier about calling the principal and complaining, it's not a good thing. It's not good. But sometimes you gotta do it and you have to go between the raindrops, constantly between the raindrops. So why? Why is the world so, it looks like, corrupt? The Baal Shem Tev explains, and that was one of the Hasidus was trying to teach that very, very much. Baal Shem Tev came, went from town to town to teach that idea of a Chodra Chacha 
the idea that Hashem wanted when He created the Bria was that you should be able to remember of Hashem even while you have to be dealing with Gashmius and deep down in Gashmius. Then, if you remember of Hashem, there's no bigger shlemus, there's no bigger goal than that. Malachim can't do that. The Malachim, the, the, the deeper it is, the harder it is, and you're working on yourself, you're even trying. Even by trying, you remember of Hashem. It, it, that, that, that's amazing. An, an amazing, fascinating piece in Bisaran, on Shabbos Agadol, the Sefer Bisaran of Rabban Agadol, not Rabban Agadol, the, his grandchild, the Bisaran from Karlin. And on Shabbos Agadol, he says that a person was walking in the street, and the Bisaran they will quote right there. Say it from inside. He says a person was walking in the street. And unintentionally, he saw something that he wasn't supposed to see. A, 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 a woman walked by. Pam achas halach echad b'shuk. Zadav ayin vav. Upoga b'isha. And just head on. So a woman, and, and he wasn't, was unappro- wasn't appropriate. He stuck a bar, and he looked. And then he jumped back. He jumped back. He got very scared. He knew he wasn't supposed to be looking. Why? Because he remembered. He zochar as dvar He remembered. Asher also lis takel biisha. Vaomer achocham, and the smart man that stood there, she omad vero azoyis. He says, he said, bevada yo isha azoyis he tzadekes. She must be a tzadekes. Shal yoda because of her, that person remembered of Hashem. So the smart man said, you should be looking at this situation with a broader look. What happened? What happened right now? You know what happened right now? This guy is walking in Manhattan. This guy is down in the dumps. And he is remembering of Hashem. And it's it's causing him to act differently and jump back and try to do what's right. You, you know what you did now? Now, it's not like you didn't do something wrong. You just elevated the whole Bria. The whole, the whole world was just elevated. And that was the idea of creating a world full of Gashmis. That was the idea. Now, Gashmis, Nesiyonis, Yetzirahoras, is in all aspects. It's in Sinias, it's in Shmir, it's in Aim. It's money, which is tough. Very, very tough. I don't know what, what's, what's more, uh, what's harder for the, for the Nefesh. The Gemara says, Nafshan Shalotam Muhammadosan, Arais and Gezel. You, you, you're in the money, you're, you're holding the money, you're touching the money, and you're supposed to be doing exactly the way you're supposed to. It's very tough. But that was the idea. And it paid for Hashem. This is so, what's so amazing about it. The Chazal explained that Hashem knew that people are going to fall. Knew that. And Hashem said, I, want, I know. But then, the person is going to get up and do what's right from down in the dumps. Wow. That is amazing. That's bringing Hashem, that's bringing Alakus all the way down, remembering even when you're there, you're remembering of Hashem. That's finishing off, that's explaining what the Chayvah Salavis is saying. Chayvah is saying, is saying simple words. We start off this year. Hashem created a world that a person should have to do his childless in order to reach what they, what they want. You know why? To test you if you're going to be using the right means. That was the idea. It's much deeper than that. He put you into situations where constantly you're going to be around and it's so easy and it's, a, it's, it's so sensitive to be doing the wrong thing or thinking with the wrong mindset. And if you will succeed, you have no idea what you're doing. No idea what you're doing. You are giving life to your neshama in situations where it was 99% chance you're going to be giving life you're going to, for your goof, and you instead you, you, you put the goof away and you said, sorry, right now I'm giving life for my neshama. That's amazing. You can have a situation, that's why you can have a situation where Hashem pushes people into such crazy, I'm calling it, Nisiyonis or situations, because right then and there they're going to be able to give Muslim the food and life for their neshama. 
Example, a young man is sitting and learning in Koil, and he's successful, bright, he has a good, he, he really gets it, and he understands Gemara and Toysis, and it's amazing. And then, Baruch Hashem, he has a child of two or three, and he's not really making ends meet, and, he, and he's, he's trying, and he, he's starting to borrow money, and it's thousand dollars and it turned into five thousand dollars and then he goes to his rov and he says uh, I have to continue on coil I think I'm sure that I'm doing that but I'm not managing and my wife is falling apart and I, I have no options and the rov says Tzadik I think the right thing is to go to work this is the, and he says he's upset he says what do you mean I'm 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 the next Shashiva I don't know if the rov knows <laughs> I, I I have I have, I have a future I'm not going to work. No way on a, a blue shirt. I'm not going to work. He says, okay, come back to me next week. We'll see. And he's fighting with himself and he can't sleep at night. I was, I promised myself I'm not going to do that. And he's like, he has this image in his mind. So I'm going to be like that guy, like regular. So, so, what do you mean? I was like, the guy. I, I like made it. And all of a sudden my dreams falling apart, my whole life, my whole future. And this is just one example. And what's if he has a child that's not well and he has to move and go to a place that has doctors? What's if he have, has a whole different situation? Constantly. My Samachoyam, every single lady situation that happened. And let's take the good scenario. He tells him, okay, you have to go to work, but I have a good idea for you, he says. You could go to work in Toyota. That would be such a good idea. You, if you are so connected to Torah, maybe try. You could be a Rebbe and teach Torah. And he says, a Rebbe? I don't know, a Rebbe? He says, yeah, and he tells him, you should know there's nothing better than teaching kids. Okay, he's, he's not, he didn't swallow it, but he hears. He's like the echo, he hears. And then he's like telling himself, okay, but if I'm a Rebbe... Uh, nothing less than Kita Chest and, or ninth grade or like it's the last. I, I'm going to be put myself on a frock. I'm, I'm not calling myself a Rebbe. I'm a Ram. I'm a Magachir. I'm going to be taking these boys and I'm going to beat the daylights out of them with Toysis and Reb I'm, I'm not going for this. And he gets up and he, he, does, he, he reads the, the paper and there's one opportunity open. Kita Dalit. Kita Dalit is open for you. And he's not taking it. I don't care. He told his wife, he's not taking it. No way. And then, he has nothing. And he, his wife calls the Rav. And the Rav asks him, okay, what happened? And he says, there's nothing. There's absolutely nothing. I think I heard. There might be an opening. No, no, it's not for me. Why are you saying it's not for you? It's teaching Torah. No, no, it's not. And then he gets himself to do it. And then his Rav has a talk with him. Three hours at night. Three hours. And he tells him, why? Why are you so upset? And he gets it. He gets him slowly. And he teaches him. He tells him, I want you to stand tomorrow in class. Key to the And you're going to be embarrassed. You're going to be hoping no one looks through the window. And you're going to be teaching those kids. You know why? Because you're doing the shlichas of Hashem. Hashem said you to teach those kids. And you're going to be serving Hashem. Now, Three weeks ago, when he was learning in Koilum, he had a big Gemara open with Reb Chaim and all that. It could be that he was giving life for his goof then. He was powerful. He was strong. He was successful. Shrewd. You know, he was the guy. And Hashem wanted to save him. Very simple. Hashem wanted to save him. That's exactly why he wasn't making ends meet. That's why he didn't have money. Because Hashem is taking him and building him helping him get to the goal. And he was doing his shtadlus with the gulf. So Hashem could have had, there's no problem, there could be an opening in ninth grade as well. But what, what's Hashem going to, what is he going to have from it? It's just doing the same thing again. There's no, there's no other option besides helping him slowly, slowly. And then he gets it. And then, this, the sweet part is that then if he gets it, then he doesn't fight it. Is a good job <laughs> that helps him get the right place. He will be davening so much better. He will be successful in Olam Hazer too because he's going to be giving Moza and he's going to be life of his neshama. It's one of so many examples, every one of us. 
I don't know one person <laughs> which Hashem doesn't help us that this should happen to us. Because we're in this world. And whatever we do, wherever we reach, all of a sudden we find ourselves trying to be in charge and successful. And people shouldn't know how successful we are. So, for example, you have a man, he's doing business. All of a sudden, things are not going well. He's not earning. He's trying to set things up and trying to do it better. And he's advertising and he's trying to do a sale and it's just not working. And it's a year and then another year. And he's going he's consult, you know, what am I doing wrong? And he's going through with his consultant. No, you're doing everything right. And it, the guy tells him, I, 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 I don't know, but I don't think you should drop it because... I don't know, but it's weird because there's so many people that are in the same field like you and doing the exact same things. I don't know. Customers are coming. And they're in a guy. I have no idea. I can't explain it to you. There could be a lot of explanations. But one of the explanations is that if you're going to be too successful, it's going to be very scary. Just for that. So Hashem is not going to let you die from starvation. It's not going to happen. It's just going to be that you're going to not feel so successful, and it's, it's like helping you. Hashem is, is just helping you slowly being a, be able to change your mindset. And by changing your mindset, the earlier you change your mindset, the more you're saving yourself so much agmas nefesh and situations, because Hashem will have to remind you, every person, there isn't another option. Hashem will have to remind the person that they, they should get to that feeling because if they go away from this world and they didn't get it, that's sad news. They have to come again. It's something that's very scary and it's not maybe so uh, pleasant to say it. But I'm, I'm just saying sometimes. Bemis, we don't know Cheshboi Neshamayim. Never. Never ever. But it's food for thought. Sometimes people that during their life they, they had enough of being humble, of understanding uh, that they're not in charge. Sometimes later on in life, in the older, in the, when they're older in life, in the, in the, when they're 80 or, or older, they don't have to go through all the hardships. Why? Because they already learned it. So they could live Tamil Chachon and Kosman Shimaskinum Daitim Sashavas Alayim. They could learn and they could have they don't have to be sick with all sicknesses. They don't have to be come on to others on and sometimes it's so humbling and so it's like sad. It has to happen to a person sometimes. So a person could do it on their own. A person could do it on their own and then they could save themselves from later on. But it's only one of the Mahalchem constantly, but it's every single person. The more successful a person is, the scarier it is. Because see, the, the goof is, that, 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 that's the situation. You brought that Maisa the Chuz of Lublin, he said why he could have Ruach HaKadosh. What amazing. Yeah. The, 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 the Chuz from Lublin, he said the reason why he has Ruach HaKadosh it's not because he's in such a high madrega. It's the exact opposite. He speaks in a sefer a lot about Anova being humble. He says because he constantly understand every day he thinks about it how he's so nothing, and he lives with it, and he has zero milus. So any eid just just humble so so it has ruach hakodesh. It came his ruach hakodesh came because he was the Lowest, cause, cause, cause. and the Kaddish Baruch Hu knows it wouldn't hurt him, wouldn't be mazik him, because he says, uh, I, "I can't become a Balkad." <laughs> Hashem knows that Ruach Hakodesh wouldn't hurt him, because uh, anyways, not going to be able to be a Balkad because I know I have nothing. It's very hard to reach that level, but it's it's very very powerful. But it's the truth. It is the truth, and 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 that's what a person is working constantly. To be able to remind themselves, and he knows that he must remind themselves. It's not going to be pleasant if they're going to be living with the wrong mindset. It's not about having me talk on is going to make me rich. It's about, I don't really have another option. The other option is not pleasant. Now, being that we said that this world is like 
pushing you so strong, forcefully to the other direction, and if a person doesn't constantly work on it, they're going to be in a very bad state because they're constantly going to be pushed the other way. So, what's the aids? What is the the the, the path? That a person is supposed to remind themselves, okay, okay, tomorrow I'm going to remind myself and then I'm going to forget. What's the system of reminding yourself that Hashem put into the Bria, that a person should be successful to be able to tell them? And again, it's, it's, it's being Mechanic children, it's really being successful in the house, it's with everything. What's the system? So it's an unbelievable Ramchal, once again, but this is in the Sefer Derech Hashem. The Ramchal, so fundamental. Ramchal is in Derech Hashem. Chelik Dalit Perek Hey Ois Base. He says, the more a person gets deeper into the world, that's how far he furthers himself from the Oir Ha'Elyon, from the higher light. Umeschashach Yose, and they live in a darker world. So, when a person dives into this world and lives in this world and eats and talks to people and lives with the news and they 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 constantly getting further and further away and they live in the darkness. Hashem prepared a tikkun a a a a way of fixing it, a system in the world that fixes this issue, this problem. And that is, Mashayag de Ma'odam, that a person is, is, uh, starts off earlier to become closer to Hashem by the first thing in the morning, davening to Hashem, asking for all your needs and trusting in Him and knowing my issues that I have, I throw around to Hashem, Hashem will take care of it. This should be the beginning. It should be the fundamental established that he does. Ad This would this would create a situation that afterwards, when a person already goes into this world and he's doing other types of established, which is the derke ateva, a person does established, he will not fall into doing it with the wrong mindset. Because he had earlier already put his whole mindset and his whole, all his emotions onto, onto Hashem. And he will not fall, he won't fall deep. Because he had already given out all his energy when he died. The Ramchal is saying something so powerful. That if you wake up in the morning and you start doing the shtadlis, you have no chance, you don't stand a chance. Because this world, is, of course, it's just going to take you with. But the Hashem created a system that you get up in the morning and you're not going to go to work because you didn't daven yet. Now, what's the Yitzhahara's way of helping that that shouldn't work? That he sets up the mindset of the person in the morning, he knows this person knows that he has to daven. And I won't get him that he shouldn't daven or that he should be working before he davens. Nah, he won't go for it. He's a serious fellow. So what does the Yitzhahara do? Yitzhahara t- t- says, constantly just puts into his mind, okay, today's a heavy day. we got to get up early tomorrow. Okay. Tomorrow, we got to get up 6 o'clock because you have to have the 6.30 minion because you got to get to work 7, 10, you got to be on the go. So do the davening. And then you need to have a good couple of hours because you have to really put yourself into it. The idea that Yitzhak puts into the mind of the person is, okay, daven because you have to daven, because, because you're, I'm a yid and I have to daven. But then I'm going to be really taking it seriously, <laughs> what I need to do, and I'm going to invest myself fully into it. That's so wrong. The, what a person is trying to work on themselves slowly to develop a feeling that goes like this. And a person could be working on it, it could take time. But this is the ultimate, he's trying to get there. You know what you're trying to get to? That the harder my situation is, the the, the more complicated, and even in time, I have so much to take care of. Okay, that means that I have to invest myself strongly into davening. Because davening is the thing 
that causes the abundance to come. Learning creates Shefa. All the rest is just wasting, uh, it's not wasting my time because Hashem created such a type of world, but then I'm just, I gotta do what I gotta do. The rest is that I gotta just wait in the doctor's office because what should I do? But that's not when I'm doing it. That's not when I'm creating the solution to my problems. Every, every day a person knows I have issues and I, I'm, I'm right there to create the solutions. Even practically, who told you that because you're going to invest 12 hours, you're going to come up with the right solution? Whoever told you that? Who told you that you're going to be paying thousands of dollars for therapists, then they're going to come up with the right solutions? You have no idea. Whoever was in that world knows how painful it is. Sometimes it works and sometimes not. I'm saying sometimes and sometimes. I don't want to get into detail what the percentages are. It works sometimes and many times it doesn't work. I don't know. Nobody could know. We're trying. I don't know. We're supposed to be trying what we could try. But sending to the therapist, even if it's the right thing, and a lot of times it's the right thing, but again, that doesn't create anything. That's just because we got to do what we got to do. But when what does create? That means creates solutions, creates it. Learning creates solutions and s- creates new situations that nothing could, could create, only Hashem could create, and that does it. So the mindset of the person, the Ramchal explains, is like this. If you, Yitzhu Shalom is Gavala Bechol Yai. The Yitzhara is not fresh. He, he's, he's there out there, 6 a.m., ready to fight. He's really, you're tired. He's not tired. He's ready to fight. You're gonna get up in the morning. If your mindset is gonna be, okay, I'm gonna do what I gotta do. I have my stalker that I give. I have a lecht for that and that tzaddik. I say to him, and I, and I dive into that minion, and we start five minutes earlier as Shkodesh, because I gotta be done. By 7.15, I have to be done, and then I'm out to work. Forget about it. You're gonna definitely be with the wrong mindset. For sure, it's not possible. But if you're gonna do the opposite, that means you're gonna understand that really you know where I'm looking to get to. I'm looking to get to is, the more complicated my situation is, okay, I gotta go to sleep 9 o'clock at p.m. 9 o'clock, you normal, 9 p.m. Who goes to sleep 9 o'clock today? Is, you know what? You tell your wife, I'm going to compromise. 9.45. 9.45 p.m. It's complicated. He has to put a noisemaker because all the kids are up. <laughs> like, no, what, no, no, what happened to you? He says, what should I do? I'm really messed up. And I have this amount of things to do. So what are you going to do? You're going to get up 3 a.m. and what? I'll tell you what I'm going to do 3 a.m. I'm not going to be learning my daf, because I shouldn't have to learn it after davening. Yeah, I might be learning my daf, but my mindset is not going to be covered, covered, no, no. I'm going to be doing something I never did. I got up in the morning, and I'm preparing myself, because I'm going to daven. And I'm preparing, I'm saying tilim, and I'm having a zinan, so I should be able to daven with the right nefesh. Hashem I don't know if it's going to work. Sometimes... The Hasidic Shesram explained a person could prepare, prepare, prepare the Tvei Shleimah. It's in Pasha's Voyer, you could check it out. A person could make a Chon of in two hours and then, boom, nothing. It just didn't turn on. He doesn't know. True, like anything else, I'm trying. He says, tell him before davening. He davens, he should be able to daven. He learns before davening to prepare. Goes to the mikveh before davening. He works himself, works himself. And then, he comes to davening. And reminds himself, even before he daven. Listen, this is my only chance. I, I I have no mahalach. I, I have no mahalach how I could help myself. Help me. Help me in tshuva, hashiveinu. Help me in atachon ladam das. There's no way I could come up with a mahalach. But you could put it into my mind. Help me to do tshuva. I don't know with how to do tshuva and everything. Yeah, Help me, help me. Work it out to me. I don't know how to do tshuva. Forgive the old sins. Refoeinu. He davens for parnosa. He says parsha samon. He does the whole thing. Then, he didn't finish yet, because he saw on a sefer that after the shefer comes down from davening, the Ramban says you have to make a keli, a vessel, you have to, the, the, the bondage will have to go into something. After davening, he's always the first person, yeah, the people that like to get a hitch have to put that film by Elena, because he's like out the door. The first, he's there. He's like, what happened to you? What, no, he's there after davening, he's continuing, he's saying, he's partial someone, he's saying, he's doing Mava and he's learning after davening. He's there, because why? Because today I have to invest. What should I do? What should I do? I'm stuck. Then, 10 a.m., it depends. I don't know if he's self-employed or not. But like, finally, he's totally invested himself already. He's tired already. 
he feels like it, it's noon. He didn't eat breakfast yet, but he had such a long shade of him yet. Then he's coming to work. And he's like three quarters burnt out already. But not burnt out because he gave up. Burnt out because I did it already. It's like when someone's trying to speak to a student and he already gave my whole speech. <laughs> I already did the whole thing. But he's, but he's happy and he's calm and he's like, okay, I'll make the phone call. But he doesn't have to put his effort in it. He's just doing it with some kind of problem. There's that. And he expects that there should be all kinds of surprises. He expects surprises. And he doesn't go with that mistake that because I died today, all of a sudden I'm going to be winning a million dollars. No, he doesn't. Totally doesn't go with that mindset. He says, I know there could be surprises and it could be looking <laughs> worse. But I know that I did my status. I know that I invested my status where I'm supposed to. I'll just quote one line of the Bnei Soscha. It's in the memorial of Kislev Tevis. Maimar Gimel Oizchav Dalet. He says, when a person goes out in the, in the street, to do, uh, to, do uh, to invest and to buy and to sell, he should remember. Whatever happens is not because of my ishtadlis. It's kefi hishtad lusay v'toy lo mitzvahs. I don't uh, rely that because I learned, Hashem is definitely going to give me money. I, I don't know what my learning is. Not because I doubt that Hashem is going to do whatever I want. No. But I know that whatever happens has to do with my toy lo mitzvahs. So if something happens, I know I must have had a schos, because it's not. He, he, he trains himself to live the type of life. The more complicated things are, the more things I must take care of, the more I know I'm, I'm going to have to invest in that, because I have no other way to help it. When they change that, that's the solution to the whole shir. The, the, if you are going to go into this world, the world is going to just push you away, and you're going to do everything trying to do it with your goof. Don't do that. The world is nasty, very nasty. Go into a different world. Go into a total different world. Invest in it. Get yourself totally into it. Then, when you're going to enter, even if it's Manhattan, it's really going to be totally, totally different. Totally different. And then you stand the chance, not only because you dive and well, also, because Hashem is going to give you Siyat the Shmai, the Aracham Kodesh says, You try, and then I'm going to help you. He's going to give you a special Koyach that you should be able to be calm and remember that it's not what I'm doing. It's because I'm doing it, because I'm the Shliya. This is what I have to do. This is a little bit to understand our Tachlis and Ishtadlis, and the mindset that a person is supposed to try to have. A person is learning it, it's also a beginning are trying to do the right thing. Okay.